G'day YouTube, we're here for a build rundown on an XV750. These bikes are super popular in the custom world, so we had to really stretch our legs to try and find some unique ground to tread for this custom build. Guy came to us because he loved a few of our other builds and sort of let us have free reign until it came to the paint design. Let's get into exactly what we've done, the ins and outs of our XV750 build. I'm Tom Gilroy and you're in the Purpose Built Moto Garage. Now, if you've ever ridden an XV750, you know they're a pretty lackluster ride. A 750 V-Twin is never gonna put out too much power. So we decided to do something about that. We knew Guy wanted a pretty nice bike to ride around on, and he does love a bit of speed, so we dug into the engine. What we've done here is take this tired XV750 and bore it out to a near 1100. To do this, we needed to get into some parts diagrams. No one really makes a kit that you can just throw into these to give you an 1100cc engine so we had to figure it all out by ourselves now there's a lot of meat in the barrel which means we had some room to bore out but we had to dive in and find uh, custom pistons that would fit in this thing and work with the valve configuration and then we started work on the top end to make sure that we could get enough flow for the fuel and air coming in to match the extra capacity now jesse our engine builder really had his work cut out for him on this one once we'd gone and sourced our pistons and figured out what we had to do in terms of boring it out we sourced some custom con rods and then started uh, figuring out the intakes and the valves. So we've gone with some oversized valves which required machining and then we've ported and polished the intakes and then Guy had supplied us with this, uh, this two into one intake that allows you to use a single carburetor that hangs out the opposite side of this XV750. Now that probably wasn't the smartest thing in terms of performance but with the juice that we've got out of this with the overbore, um, the ease of tuning was sort of what we were going for on that modification. So we've used a really nice Makuni carburetor and a DNA pod filter set up to let this thing breathe easy. The end result of this was nearly doubling the horsepower that this engine was putting out and really giving it a lot of torque. So we're sitting at about 65 horsepower, I believe, and the torque is about 70 Newton meters right through the rev range. So you can imagine this thing is super fun now, a lot better than the old 750 motor that we started with. Once we had the motor finished, it was time to start laying out how this bike was sit and stand on the road. Previously, guide fit an R1 front end, but it was sitting far too low on the front end of the bike. What we've done is add a little bit of height here by way of some extension tubes and a Cognito Moto top triple clamp. So that allowed us an extra 50 mil on the front so we could start on the custom swing arm that Guy wanted on the rear. Once we had that front suspension sorted out, uh, it was time to start building the rear. So before we sent it up to Joe from Ride Dynamics to have the suspension tuned, we had to build the swing arm. So, we figured out our shock length and put a solid bar in place that we could build from so we'd have our stance correct on the bike. What Guy wanted to, was to get rid of the ugly square bar swing arm that they have and build a really nice tube frame trellis setup. This is actually a really fun job. I gave Donny a rest on this one and took it on myself. Our first port of call here was making the suspension mount and the top bars and then the bolt through. So we had that set up and then we started shaping and molding it into the rest of the swing arm. This is all done by, by way of some 22 mil chromoly bar and some trellising there to make it sort of look nice and really strengthen up this swing arm. Further fabrication on the rear required that we build a sort of swing arm mounted plate mount because the subframe on these things, once you customize them, goes so short and a guy wanted a really small seat on this thing with an untailed exhaust, there's gonna be nothing back here. So we had to make sure we sort of put uh, our number plate as a semi sort of pseudo fender on the rear here and then mount our tail lights too. So it was all sort of erring on the side of being street legal. The tail lights, we've used our new Omni lights. These are being road tested at the moment on a few of our custom builds, but they'll be available really soon through our online store. We've just got our, uh, our standard sort of tail tidy setup, number plate mount, and the chrome only tube, of course, just uh, holding everything in place over this nice fat rear wheel. This is actually a rear wheel that Guide custom sourced. I think it's off an XV1000 or an XV535. There's something there that he'd already sourced the wheels and it's a fatter back tire. It's about as big as you can go on the rear of this thing. And uh, sort of seeing this thing on the road from the rear, you can really get a gauge of like, 
the oversized tire, it makes it look really cool, especially uh, sitting out underneath this exhaust that we've built. So the custom exhaust on this thing was another real standout piece that Guy came to us with and he had a fairly good idea of what he wanted. He wanted to make sure that we had that sort of atypical XV750 custom small seat, but he wanted to jam some mufflers underneath it, which took quite a bit of work. Just in terms of the exhaust routing and making sure we could fit it in there and have it sound good too, because uh, you know if the exhaust doesn't perform well and sound great, it's, uh, you know, it's basically a paperweight. So we make sure that when we do this sort of stuff, we get it right. The front cylinder was relatively easy, curving up and in under the seat here and then coming out on a mu uh, muffler on the back here. This side, however, was a little bit more complex. So if you want to come around, I'll show you exactly what we've done. Now, the rear cylinder has quite a lot of bends in it. So generally, the rear cylinder will exit through the back of the frame here and duck out underneath the swing arm and then exit through the tail. What we've had to do here to get up under the seat was modify this, um, this engine mount and frame brace. So we've had to cut a pretty big hole in there and put a lot of bracing in it to redo that strength so we could come out the side of the engine mount and then curve up. So if you look at these from either side, the curves are sort of really nice and similar. You've got that sort of back forward angle before it exits underneath the tail. These mufflers were all handmade too. This was a, a Donny special. So he set to work on getting these done. Super nice setup. We've just shaped some stainless steel sheet metal, made a muffler box. There's actually, there's no share pipe on this. So it's a true two into two muffler system. And with the engine work we've done on this thing, it sounds so nasty. This thing probably, you know, the sound is equivalent to like a cam sportster and sort of put it that way. It's super nice sound and really, really happy with it because it's quiet on idle, but then when you rip open that throttle, the engine lets you know it's there. Now, before I move on to some other stuff that we've done on this bike, yes, the exhaust gets hot on your leg. I know that, I'm not an idiot, so don't bother putting it in the comments. We've put some really good heat shielding here that really protect your legs. So this isn't just an aluminum cover. We've had an aluminum cover and then packed it in behind it with a lot of um, some like heat resistant wrapping. So until this bike gets super, super hot, you don't even feel a thing. Detail work on the front was done by way of one of our DIY fender kits. So we've got our nice aluminum fender, some really clean stainless steel struts here. Again, like this is a choose your own adventure kit that we sell on our website. You can make this to suit any style of bike. With this, we've started to use some sharp bends and a lot of bolt mounts. So forward of the forks here, you don't really see a thing. It's kept nice and clean, but the little stays that we've made have some nice angles on them, gives it that little modern touch. And we've done them in a nice powder coated black, offsetting against this beautiful olive green that we've painted the rest of the bodywork. The lighting on the front here, sitting underneath our Cognito Moto top triple clamp, we've got a Daytona Diva digital dash. This is an all-in-one digital dash. It's got your speedo, taco, dash lights, the whole box and dice is set up in this little computer here. So that was wired into our system, sits pretty there. And then we've used our seven inch flashpoint headlight. We've got our uh, hollow tip black indicators here. And then we've utilized a bottom mount to keep this thing nice and low and super tight into the forks. Again, playing into that modern feel. For the handlebars, Guy wanted to make sure that everything was kept sort of low and sleek over the bike. So clip-ons were used. We've gone with some ASV levers. We've got a Brembo master cylinder that was off the uh, R1 front end that was grafted on here. Purpose-built Moto three button switches, a really nice domino throttle that we've been using on a lot of our builds lately. And then of course our scrambler mirrors underslung on the bars to make sure we keep that nice top line. So the subframe and seat on this thing was all sort of part and parcel with the undertail exhaust. As we were fabricating it, we had to make sure that everything was gonna to talk together and work when we finished it up. So the seat was kept nice and short, really skinny. It just sort of gives that really muscular bulldog sort of look. So you have some big fat shoulders on the front end of the bike and it sort of trails off over the tail. Again, timeless auto trim coming through with the leather work. Thanks Jamison for another great job. Just a really simple, nice, smooth Napa leather and some linear strips along there with the nice little purpose-built moto detailing on the back. He's got embroidered in there. Further fab work that we've done. So once we normally have our handlebars and seat done, it's time to do the foot peg placement. So Guy, it was an easy one. He's about the same height as me, if, uh, if not a little bit taller, but so we could sort of sit on the bike myself and get a gauge on where his feet needed to be. 
Generally, you'll see a lot of guys take the easy way out and use those big cast pieces that come on XV750s and you feed it all the way back here. That is no way to ride a bike, let me tell you now. We put them on there and tried it and it is horrible. So, what we did was do it properly. We used our bar mounts and engine mounts here. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of mounting points, some nice strong M10 bolts that sit through here, made up some spaces and some bar work. And then we've created our linkage onto the rear drum brake there that works really nicely. Everything's set up well. And when you sit on this bike, it's a nice comfortable ride. Well, as comfortable as you can get with clip-ons. If you come around on this side, I've actually done a really nice little bit of detailing here. So because we had to create like a nice triangle bracket here, I've just done a little bit of uh, detailed bar work. And then on the other side, it sort of matches, but you've got a lot more linkages and stuff for the rear brake side. So this is just a little bit of fabrication that I did to dress it up a touch. Now we get asked all the time on our blogs and videos, where do you guys hide the battery? Where are you hiding the electrics? That's a really common question we get. So I guess on this one is one of the more difficult projects because we have no under seat space. The exhaust is right there. So what we've done on this project is the battery box and regulator rectifier are actually tucked up underneath the swing arm. So we make a little box there with a few mounts on it, bolts onto the frame. So that takes care of the bulky stuff. And then for our black box and other modules, it actually sits under the tank. So if you look at a picture of a stock XV750, which you can catch on our website, we have like a little before and after on there. The tank actually flows down a lot further onto this frame. So what we've done is lift this tank quite considerably to give it that nice top line. And then that creates a lot of space underneath the tank. So on an XV750 build, we make a little plate mount that bolts onto the top spine of the frame. And that houses our black box, relays, a few other bits and pieces, just to make sure that it's all nice and hidden. And then your ignition module is also bolted onto the back of the spine of the bike as well, which is a standard placement. Further, we've put a nice little key mount here. And then our client Guy requested that we upgrade the ignition. He actually supplied these parts with it. And that was sort of when the conversation around performance on this bike started. So we've got a Twintech um, dual fire ignition coil that we've tucked up in that top engine mount there too. So, I mean, if you look really closely, you can see this stuff, but generally as this thing's gonna be flying past you, you're not gonna see a thing. It'll look really super clean. Now the design of this bike, uh, especially with the paint, we kept the detailing quite simple because as you look at it, there's a lot going on with this bike. So a lot of the time I feel like if you go too far with the paint on a bike that looks this crazy, it can sort of take away from the other work that you've done. Uh, we had a few things to work with here. So we had obviously uh, black forks, blacked out engine and all that sort of stuff was already part and parcel of our project and Guy had already had the wheels powder coated. So he'd found this really beautiful block bronze and had the wheels done before he actually bought them into us. So that sort of set the tone for the color and limited us in our choices. Well, I won't say limited us, but that sort of guided us in our choices for the color. We threw back and forth a few ideas. We were gonna go with the bright Ducati red and then it sort of changed to gold. And then we landed on, at Guy's suggestion, this really nice olive green. So this is sort of like a, a really heavy metallic green that turns uh, a goldish tinge under lights. And then we've utilized just a slight bit of black and then bronze on the tank with a simple PBM logo and Yamaha detailing on the side. Because there's not that many fairings on this bike, the paint was pretty cheap and easy. Justin had it knocked out in about a week or so. Turned out awesome. The color choice really uh, is, the, is the key player in this one. And uh, I, think, I don't think we could have pulled it off any better. That's gonna wrap it up on our XV750 build. This is another bike that we've actually played with before, but this one by far and above is my favorite yet. Just being able to really get a lot of juice out of that motor was a great process for us to go to and really shows what we're doing with purpose-built performance at the moment. Such a great asset to be able to produce high performance engines in house and just adds to the quality of our builds, making sure we control every part possible. I'll fire this thing up now, take you guys out for a test ride as per usual. Let us know what you think about the project in the comments. If you have any questions, hit us up. We're very accessible. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. Here we go, she's angry.
Purpose Built Moto has built a great community of both riders and builders around what we do. Whether you love our builds, you use our parts on your project, or you're just here for the content that we create on social media. Thanks for being part of our tribe. Next time you're in the garage planning out your build, or you're just tinkering around, make sure you jump on to PurposeBuiltMoto.com, support the cause, and grab a few parts for your pride and joy. Thank <laughs> you.